and then uh, actually when he's back in the car and he managed to drive away with it with the car again uh, he asked her well, what was saying Russian and when we're in, been driven to the police station she said yeah they were telling me if I slept with them the police officers then we didn't have to pay any money Experience. Welcome to another episode of the Volka Valkas with me, Connor Klein. Greetings from Odessa Mama here on the shores of the Black Sea. It is the beginning of the quarantine for the coronavirus. Maybe watching this sometime in the future. And um, yeah, you'll know the outcome of this whole pandemic. But at the moment, they've actually uh, started to restrict things here in Ukraine. Although you can see there's still plenty of people out, some street musicians. So life is not completely shut down for the moment. And um, yes, in this episode, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about the corruption situation in Ukraine, because it's something I'm very often asked about, uh, along with how dangerous Ukraine is, actually how corrupt it is. Uh, which is a little bit related, of course, corruption can affect you in a dangerous way uh, and you may be expected to corrupt someone in order to get out of a dangerous situation. Uh, so I'm going to go down to that. I'm actually also going to contrast it with uh, what it was like before because I have over 10 years of experience traveling here to uh, Ukraine and spending a lot of my time here as well as other countries in Eastern Europe. So I actually remember what it was like uh, when my first trip in 2009 and I can give you a contrast about how the country has changed since then. So when I came in 2009, it was very different to today uh, in terms of corruption, especially as a foreigner because you were exposed to very different things. So at the time I actually looked up uh, how Ukraine ranks in terms of corruption and back we will say I'm going to divide this up in the pre-Euromaidan revolution, which was obviously 2014, um, before it and afterwards, and what happened exactly briefly during the revolution and why it made a difference. But um, back before, basically, this was a kleptocracy. Basically, it was just like everything gets stolen. That was the official uh, version. And a lot of the rank is corruption. had it like one of the most corrupt places on earth, this country. So just endemic corruption, whether it happens to be the police, uh, the health system, the educational system, government politicians is like endemic on all levels uh, it ranked extremely poorly and there weren't really any um, structures in place institutions in place to try and tackle that uh, after the fall of the Soviet Union became independent it became this kleptocracy is a site in which people just steal uh, everything so it was a pretty bad situation and I remember as a foreigner um, it was one of the things that made it a little bit intimidating coming here was the police um, they used to routinely try to shake down foreign tourists in the major cities, including here in Odessa and also in Kiev, uh, by asking you for your passport. If you didn't have your passport with you on that, at that moment, they would demand basically a bribe. They basically have to come to the station, we're going to detain you, or basically give us X amount of money. And used to be on the lookout for uh, foreigners in order to uh, try to hit them up for money in this way. I remember on my first trip here in 2009, I actually bumped into some Indian students, and because they obviously stood out more than me, uh, for not being local uh, because of their skin color. Uh, they basically told me when we used to go to, our, we went to Arcadia once or uh, twice, which is a touristic part of the city with a lot of clubs and bars, uh, to walk in front of me because well, you're going to just get stopped with us. And there used to be police waiting on that entrance to Arcadia and just looking for foreigners. And if they didn't have their passport, give me the money. That used to be the way they used to operate. And also in Kiev, uh, this was an issue. So this was. Uh, mainly under, it was actually Yushchenko was the president when I first came and then afterwards was Yanukovych um, who's the president of Ukraine and it got even worse for me shaking down. I remember being with some Dutch guys who I met would have been back in 2000 and I think 2011 summer and one of them got shaken down and Arkady just standing outside a club he just came outside I think at least going to go smoke outside and the police snapped him and said where's your passport? and gives us the money. And he was intimidated, he gave over this money. It wasn't a huge amount of money, it was probably about 10 euros at the time, so about $11. Uh, but still, so he had it in that level, the police. Uh, there was a lot of other stories about what gone. People had told me about being, um, they, they, they were brought to the police station when they had their passport. So yeah, we have to verify it and then just say, yeah, your passport's gone. We want to find it and they had to pay to have it found at the police station, like over $100, heard that story. And um, 
Fortunately, I was never actually stopped by the police. And they didn't ask me for any money at any stage. Uh, I used to just avoid con eye contact with them, try to figure a way not to go past large groups and waiting. I just saw them like they're basically a gang in a uniform waiting to steal my money. Uh, but another Dutch friend of mine, uh, he told me a story we met back on my first trip that uh, he had a Ukrainian girlfriend, uh, who did at the time, and um, they were traveling somewhere somewhere in the provinces in Ukraine and then he got stopped um, because he was driving a rental car and they wanted to breathalyze him and <laughs> um, it's funny just to laugh about it now but it was a scary situation basically it came up positive you know he hadn't drunk alcohol and they brought him to some regional police station and basically they he didn't speak Russian they told his girlfriend uh, yeah he's going to be you know the court cases on Monday uh, so we're gonna lock him in this little cell here until then so basically in the end he had to um, give them money to get out of the trumped up charges. Uh, it was a few hundred dollars, if I remember, a few hundred euros. And then uh, actually, when he's back in the car, he managed to drive away with it, with the car again. Uh, he asked her, well, what was saying in Russian? And when we're in, been driven to the police station, she said, yeah, they were telling me if I slept with them, the police officers, then we didn't have to pay any money. So basically, they tried to prostitute, you know, force him to prostitute his girlfriend in order not to have to pay the bribe. So that was the situation. It's completely lack of rule of law, very corrupt police, very dishonest. Um, so there are just some of the stories that happened to foreigners who were here. I didn't personally experience that myself. I managed to keep out of trouble. I did speak a tiny bit of Russian and it helped also a little bit. Uh, and I did just try to avoid them like the plague. Um, so that was the situation in terms of your foreign coming to Ukraine back in, say, the early 2010s, basically. And um, corruption was a huge, huge problem. Euromaidan revolution took place in 2014. I have a podcast about that. I'll link it up in a card and down below in the description when I go know about my experience as an Irishman on Maidan in February 2014 and December 2013 uh, during the revolution. And basically one of the demands of the protesters was to clamp down on corruption. And in the post-Maidan society, obviously Yanukovych was overthrown uh, as president of Ukraine and then there was a transition in government and after that obviously we have fresh elections and Petro Poroshenko was elected on partly on a mandate to clamp, clamp down on corruption and then he recently was replaced peacefully in a vote as president and we have Zelensky as the new president of Ukraine and again anti-corruption is one of the things that is um, both demanded from outside Ukraine by its supporters diplomatically like European Union and US Canada and also internally by the people it wasn't one of the reasons that Zelensky won in such a landslide is that it wasn't felt that uh, Poroshenko had done enough to change the country in terms of corruption. Of course, there are other issues uh, that he lost on, but that was one of them. So definitely it's a big issue here. And there have been some changes made legally. So now politicians actually have to declare their wealth. That was a big thing that came in. So they have to declare all their money. And there's been some funny kind of instances where their official salary doesn't even cover like a watch they have on their wrist. Um, so yeah, that's been kind of eye-opening. Uh, the police were reformed. There's a new police force here in Ukraine the last few years and they have nice, um, not so Soviet looking uniforms like they used to have. Well, it depends what you, what you prefer. If you're into Soviet nostalgia, like maybe you love bold and bankrupts the channel, then probably you would prefer to see that when you can when you come here to Ukraine but they look a lot more like in the West the police uniforms um, so basically they renovated a lot of stuff especially in the big cities of course it's probably more antiquated if you're in a small town in the countryside but here in the city yeah they're basically a modern police force uh, they don't demand bribes off um, tourists who come here that's a big difference and they tend to be a lot younger the policemen it doesn't mean there's no corruption but they're definitely a lot better from that point of view I also heard from a lot of Ukrainians that it was harder to bribe police than it had been in the past. That also depends on what city you're in. So if you're in the west of Ukraine, it tends to be more honest and there's a higher respect for rule of law than say in Kiev or in cities like Kharkov or here in Odessa. Uh, Kiev tends to be probably a little bit better than here. From what I, it's probably not a huge difference, but a little bit better. And then here in terms of corruption is still, um, from what I read and hear from locals, still a bigger issue. Um, but there you see, with definitely with the police, that and there were some instances with foreigners here who were assaulted, and the police didn't do anything. Uh, so there were, there was a lot of um, rumors that it was because they knew the criminals and whatnot. So there's definitely probably more of an issue here, but it's definitely a lot like it was when I first came in 2009. If 
you're coming as uh, a Westerner here. You definitely don't face the same inconveniences. You don't have to worry about being shaken down by the police habitually like it was in those days. Uh, so that's some of the things to do. They reformed the police force. Um, healthcare, it still seems to be an issue though. Uh, bribery in order to get um, healthcare quicker um, and be looked after properly in the state. That's what I told. I've never actually had to go to a hospital here, thankfully, uh, with this coronavirus scare. Doubly, <laughs> fingers crossed that that's not, and touch wood, that that's not going to be the case. I have to see me inside of a hospital <laughs> to avoid that. And then uh, universities is also a big issue. People buying diplomas, uh, buying their certificates. Um, that also still, I talk to students here and they tell me it's still an issue. Some people pay for it. Others actually study and earn them. So you see, that's something that is, for me, like almost unthinkable in Western Europe. I'm sure it does exist to a tiny extent, but it's not the norm. Uh, and I think it's become less the norm here, uh, but it's still an issue. So they did make those legal changes. Also, they've, they've now brought in an anti-corruption court here in Ukraine that's just started to function. So we'll see how well that goes to actually prosecute uh, corruption crime. So they're taking a lot more seriously, but corruption is still here. It's still a highly corrupt country. Uh, it's still gonna, it ranks very poorly. It has improved. So in 2020, um, you know, on a European level, it's still extremely corrupt. Uh, is it as corrupt or less corrupt than the surrounding countries? Uh, Belarus, for example, I've been in Belarus, there's no real issue with the police looking for money or something like that. That hasn't, never seems to be an issue there. And uh, the level of corruption in Belarus is not perceived. There's of course, it's also a big factor about how we perceive it in the society. Anywhere like here in Ukraine, definitely, obviously like Russia. Uh, Russia, I remember going back in 2008, there was still this issue about not having your passport or there was something around your visa and they were looking for money. Uh, again, I managed to avoid it, but you know, my friends had this issue when they went there uh, and people about taking photos on the metro and stuff was a big issue. The police come over and try to shake them down for money, try to confiscate their cameras if they were caught uh, back in the day taking photos. I was in St. Petersburg uh, last year, going back there again this year. Definitely write me a message if you're interested in St. Petersburg for the White Knights. Uh, living these are experience with me there and that was not an issue to do any of that like I have been in the past and I didn't have any issues with the Russians uh, in terms of corruption. But like country like Moldova almost had a complete economic collapse because of corruption. Like four billion just went missing out of the banks. <laughs> so definitely the region is still afflicted by it. Ukraine has improved but still ranks extremely, extremely low in terms of perception of corruption, low perception of corruption. So basically there's a very high perception of corruption still here, even if things have improved. Looking forward, they have made some legal changes at the ballot box. People are able to punish politicians for not seeing to do enough on the issue, which is great, as they are committed on pursuing a, a track towards further integration with the European Union. One of the requirements for them to get that deeper integration and possibly could be considered as a candidate country for EU accession sometime in the future uh, is actually to clamp down on corruption. So they are under pressure to do that and they do get some support from outside in order to make those legal changes and actually try to change the society here in terms of corruption. It's going to be a long process, but they do have that, uh, taken the first steps towards it. So basically, if you come as a visitor, live this our experience, or if you come in your own here too, uh, Ukraine, you don't have to be worried about corruption for you. It's not going to affect you almost certainly. Um, if unfortunately you're a victim of crime and you, or you're beaten up and you have to go to hospital, it may affect you the way that there's just the lack of institutional care in, in that um, assault was not taken very seriously by some foreigners beaten up that I met personally here by the police. Uh, I did, the only time I ever needed the police is someone stole 50 euros out of my coat at um, a cafe in Kiev once um, and they had it on the, the CCD camera uh, and actually managed to, into, the waitress actually saw it happening because the code was behind me uh, and stopped and actually getting the rest of my money that was there. Um, and the police came very promptly. I filled out the paperwork. They're actually better than when I had this, something similar happen in Belgium with my phone been stolen actually. So there they seem pretty uh, good at reporting it. I mean, I couldn't find the guy. It's almost impossible, right? It's nothing to track. It's cash, obviously. So uh, that's the only instance I've had with dealing with them, but I have heard that they're not uh, the best here so far in Odessa. Hopefully that changes. Um, so when you come, it's not going to be an issue if you come on a short trip, obviously. If you decide to move to Ukraine and spend a lot of time here and invest 
Then it becomes a bigger issue, of course, because the courts have a very poor reputation for enforcing the real law, open to corruption. So if you invest here, that could be a big issue. Uh, and um, obviously, one of the big things that does affect a lot of foreign visitors is romance scams. And again, trying to pursue them and get a conviction for them is difficult. They have introduced laws as well about that, but I haven't really heard or read anywhere that actually the scammer girls get convicted. Uh, so that would be a good first test case to try and do. Uh, and also cafes that rip off, they're part of these scams where they overcharge, where they basically either overcharge people. There are several ins um, establishments in Odessa that are notorious for this, that are pretty mainstream. Uh, and then of course you have one that's apparently in the north of Odessa that uh, guys are lured to, that's basically just tries to shake them down and uh, you know, two big bouncers blocking their path for more than two. And then just demanding, a, you know, they pay up a bill of a thousand US dollars, thousand euros plus. Uh, because two girls who lured them there uh, ordered some expensive expensive whiskey whatever so it's basically a scam these things um, you know they shouldn't be getting away with them there's probably some corruption involved there I would imagine it's possible so yeah it's not going to probably affect you outside of that um, corruption but there's just poor yeah policing or just not enforcing the law because um, it doesn't happen so much in Belarus where there is a very strict real, uh, rule of law of course and uh, there's lower corruption but if you do decide to invest money here there are issues with um, corruption and criminality which kind of go obviously are connected to a certain extent uh, poor rule of law in general in Ukraine not being too down hard about I still love Ukraine <laughs> still have a great time when I'm here but you do need to be aware of that that definitely it is still extremely corrupt in 2020 but I am optimistic I'm optimist by nature and I think they are in the right path to changing it. It's going to be very slow, a long process, but probably in the next five to ten years you will see a bit of a difference. So now it's time for me to segue into about something that you were going to need when you come to Ukraine or if you go to Belarus and that is my secret places to meet or to bring beautiful women when you're actually here. Because you know, you come here, you don't want to go to the places, obviously scammer places and I have put together a PDF for free for a very limited amount of time probably going to be up actually when this video goes out it might only be up for another week at that stage because I'm not going to have it up for more than a month in total for instance I launched it so if the link still works below go there type in your email address and I will send you that free PDF normally for this kind of information I only give it to my consulting clients and uh, you know my current fee at the moment is $250 an hour so um, you want to go and do that so it's going to be limited it's a one-time offer only and type in your email address and then it was good off to you. I'm also working now because this is the coronavirus lockdown. Uh, it's quarantine here. It's not completely shut down as you see uh, on the 20th of March when I'm recording this. Uh, there are lots of people walking around the center, but it is becoming harder and harder. Only a few places to open. I have another video about that. I'll link it up above and below as well. That will become probably outdated <laughs> very soon. Obviously it's one to be do fresh in the, in the moment and I've been working on a video course so you will get details of that. Also if you uh, go and get the, the free PDF and that's launched very soon. It's going to be the fundamentals of dating beautiful women in Eastern Europe. So that's definitely something that you're going to be excited about. Uh, so yeah corruption leave me a comment below in uh, the comment section what you think about corruption in Ukraine in particular or country in the region if you've experienced it if you traveled here you didn't experience it you thought it was great didn't see corruption at all or you you think it's actually worse than another country that you're now living or now hanging out in let me know how you got on you just don't tell me about it you also tell everybody out there who's also watching the video and create this kind of community effect uh, and you know if you can add to what I'm giving you as value here in these videos um, yeah, what else to say? It's coronavirus, so I'm going to go back to working on my video course for you. I'm excited to finally get this done. I've been uh, contemplating it for two years now. It's going to be very soon up. And I, of course, had the last year. I mean, I rebranded this channel two years ago, away from language learning to now the Zara experience. I think I have a non-sex uh, tourist experience here in uh, Eastern Europe. And, um, you know, last year I spent having clients in person. Uh, I've had a lot of success with them. I've learned a huge amount now. I think it really give great value in this course, um, as well as obviously on the consulting calls and in person if you would come and live the Zara experience with me. If you're interested in that, of course, as always, application form below. I do try to vet everything extremely carefully. I look at the stats. I think if people click through, 
the people who ever actually come and live this our experience is like less than one percent for sure um, so even if you get to the to pass the vetting stage and get on a, a strategy call me you've already been in the top few percent um, so definitely it's not for everybody um, but if you do think that it is something that you should, are interested in living the Xar experience in person with me, then it's going to be below that as well. But the main thing is, of course, the PDF, the free guide for my secret places here. That's the end of this video. Dopa bachna, disvidanya. See you very soon in a new video. I'll probably still be here in Odessa Mama for a little bit more. But I do have some other content coming up, like I went to the region, Budjak. So um, I'm actually hoping to finish that uh, video up for you. But there was one last clip to shoot. And now it's hard to go there because they've closed down the transport links, but I closed places. But we'll, we'll figure it out. So in general, going to be here for a little bit more in Ukraine and then hopefully back in either Russia or Belarus. I'm rambling on. It's a pretty short video this time. This video, Dopa Bacha. See you very soon in the next one. Ciao. SAR EXPERIENCE